Okay guys, as you can see here we have the Seafly Faith Mini. It comes in a nice little sort of a hard shell carry bag, carry case. We open that up, we have our cables and such up in the top half of the cover. I purchased this cable myself because the cables that come with this drone are not very well shielded and they're just plain garbage cables. Same with when you buy a Feeny or a Hubson drone. They are very similar cables and I've actually had problems with disconnections with these cables guys. Since I've switched to a better shielded cable I have not had any troubles with disconnecting. We have our uh, charge cable here. That is for the battery charger. A foam protector there. There's our battery charger. It is that proprietary small charger that Seafly gives with their style drones. We have one set of sticks. Those are aluminum. We have our manual. We have four extra props and a uh, Allen key to Put them on and take them off. We have our quality certified. This just uh, shows that the drone went through rigorous testing. We have our Seafly transmitter. Nothing special, guys. It is the same style transmitter they give with every drone they have. But I can say the plastic this time around seems much better than the Arno that I had. It's a different type of plastic. It feels a lot a lot better than the last one. So they still have the micro USB style port here which they haven't upgraded yet. That's the thing about Seafly. They tend to use older gear. So it does seem pretty decent though guys, I will give it that. Here is our battery. It is a 7.7 .7 volt and 2100 milliamp, 16.17 watt hour. You'll get uh, roughly 25 to 27 minutes. I claim 27 minutes, but I'm, I would say probably 20 to 25 guaranteed. And then we have the drone. So, it's a Sony CMOS sensor, guys. The only thing I could find about it, it says it's an Umbrella A12 sensor. Doesn't tell you the exact size. We have 4K 15 frames a second, or 2.7K at 25 frames a second, which that's what I'll be filming in when you see the test plate of this because it's much easier for me to line up the video with me talking. I'll never be able to line it up at 15 frames a second. But the, like I said with the transmitter, the build quality is much better on this drone than it was with the Arno I had. It's a much better plastic. Uh, looks like we have a fan in there guys, but I'm not sure. I think that's just for show because I don't see a fan in there. And uh, leaving this drone sit on too long, it will power off. So I'm guessing it uh, kind of will overheat. We have a very, very small optical flow sensor. There is nothing in this hole. Go around to the back, we have uh, actual type C port here. So they did upgrade on this. And we have a SD card reader. SD card slot, I should say. So that's it for the drone there. We have a three kilometer image transmission, brushless motors, three axis gimbal. The gimbal does work good on this. I haven't seen any horizon issues. Uh, the camera's not the greatest guys for a Sony sensor, but it's pretty decent for the price we're paying for this drone at only $218 because that's what I got this for. Now we have GPS and GLONASS, but you're going to see in the footage that the drone does wander kind of back and forth a little. 
and now and then when you're flying forward it tends to kind of dip back and forth like so but not all the time uh like i said 27 minute flight time on the battery the transmitter has a 3.7 volt 2600 milliamp rechargeable battery this drone has a ton of features guys like drony circle me rocket helix point of interest I'm not sure if it takes panels or not. I didn't really get into the camera much, but I did take a couple of pictures to test. And it's an 8 megapixel camera on the drone. So the other thing I wanted to show you guys, because the ad stated uh, 236 grams. So let's actually test that out. Now, the last time I weighed this on my scale, it came up 249 grams. So, and you're going to see right now, guys. 249 grams. That ad states 236. So, why is it coming up 249? Unless... They updated the drone after they put that ad out. I'm pretty sure I've seen other reviews stating that the drone was 236 grams. So we had 249. So that being said, guys, I'll catch you guys out in the field. And you'll get to see how this little thing performs. Peace. Hey, guys. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in again. I am down in Sydney Mines at the uh, ballpark here. And as you can see, we have the Seafly Faith Mini. This is the first one, the version one, and I've got to test it a couple of times so far, guys, but we've had very high winds all week long, actually a little more than a week, so it was very hard to get out with this. I've even flown it in 40 kilometer an hour gusts, but I've only had it just above telephone poles, was getting the high wind warning and couldn't do much testing with it, but... We have it out today, we have 16 kilometer an hour winds, and I'm ready to go, so let's start a screen recording. And I'm going to tell you guys right off the bat, I would calibrate the compass on this every time you fly it. Okay, just waiting for connection, there we go, hit start flying. And I'm also going to tell you guys, replace the cable on this drone as soon as you get it. Don't even attempt flying it with the garbage cables. They're not very great shielded and uh, they'll disconnect. Okay, so right off the bat, we are going to do our calibration here. If you guys can see the drone. Yeah. Okay, so just kicked me at the app there. I minimized it by accident. Okay, we're going to do a horizontal calibration. Confirm. There we go, calibration success, and compass. Calibrate. Pick the drone up. I'm going to turn it kind of slowly, guys, but it usually calibrates pretty quickly. There we go, it's the first one. Tip camera up. This is the one you want to spin it slow on because it did fail on me once before. It's telling me turn slower. Now, I did have a couple of issues trying to calibrate this now and then, but not every time. And it seems to be doing it right now. It's not wanting to take its calibration. As you can see, I'm like on the fourth or fifth turn, and it's still not finishing the calibration here. It's saying turn slower. Can't turn much slower than that, guys. Now, the last time I flown this, I was right in this exact spot, and it calibrated pretty quick. Go with the. There we go. Passed. Okay. See what I mean, guys? Sometimes it'll pass pretty darn quick. Other times it'll give you an issue. So yeah, we're in 2.7k. Let's start recording. And let's auto take off. Return point has been updated. So there we go. 
Did you guys see how stable this thing is? It's not the best for stability. But it seems like it's not too bad here today. Oh, there we go. There's some movement, guys. So expect that out of this drone. I can certainly tell you expect some movement out of this drone. The last time I flown it down here, when I took off, the drone went way over here by the snowbank. So let's take it up a little bit. I'm not going to go too high, guys, because the gusts are picking up a bit here. Take it out the field, though. Put our camera down just a little bit. There we go. So it uh, says it's a Sony CMOS sensor, but it doesn't tell you the size of the sensor. It's most likely 1 over 1 over 1.3 maybe. Uh, you can see that drone is uh, kind of wobbling side to side. Yeah, it's kind of uh, kind of dipping like this here, guys as it's flying forward. But for its price point, it's not too, too bad. If you can deal with the, the little bit of a calibration issue, then it's not too bad. There's not too much out there, guys, for the $200 mark. That is actually half decent. Not that I've had yet anyway. The SJRC F5S Pro would be the better drone than this, but it's a little bit more money. I paid $218 for this, and that was tax, shipping, and all right to my door. That's from Banggood. And uh, you may be able to get a coupon to use too. Get it a little bit cheaper. Pick it up a little bit. I just had a seagull come after me there. So it has optical flow, brushless motors. You would have seen everything it comes with anyway, guys, in the unboxing part of this video. That's why I'm not going to mention too much about that. What I am going to tell you is I put this on my scale and it came up as 249 grams. And the ad states that it's 236. Now, I don't know if my scale, the battery's getting bad or what, but every time I popped it on that scale, it said 249 grams. So it's having a little bit of a time here coming into the wind. Let's turn it around. Now it's picking speed up, going the other direction. Let's stop. Take a second there to uh, gain its position. It's kind of like the fun snap I had. When you let go of the sticks, it's kind of going to wander a little bit until it finds its location. So put it in sport mode. Pull stick forward. It's not the fastest drone, guys. It's not too bad. Just seen a little tiny bit of camera gel off. Let go. Eh. Takes a second to grab position there, but it's it's really not bad. Wind speed is too high. Please pay attention to flying. Okay. So like I said, guys, the gusts are picking up a little bit. Yeah, it's having a hard time pushing forward there, as you can see. That's flying into the wind, so we'll keep it in spores. And let's fly into the wind now. Yeah, not too bad. It's fighting it well now. So for the $200 mark, I would say, yeah, it's, it's worth buying, guys. But, I mean, if you want something that's great for video and stuff, go for, like, a Mavic Mini or something. But this would be a, a decent little starter drone if you don't want to spend a pile of money. 
Uh, we will see anyway. I, I'd like to be able to get at least 20 flights in or so on this without anything drastic happening. So if it can last that long, then I would say, yeah, purchase it. Batteries are pretty cheap. They're about $60 Canadian. $50, $60 around that price on AliExpress. So that's a uh, decent point about this. Batteries aren't super expensive. Let's actually bring it over here, guys, and we'll get a couple of photos with it, and then we'll end this video. Okay, let's stop recording. Put the camera on. Snap a photo. Put the camera down towards us here. There, and snap another photo. I'm gonna turn towards the water side here. I'm gonna climb just a little bit even though it's a uh, high wind speed. It's actually not letting me climb, is it? Do I have beginner mode on? Let's see here. up there we go no it's it's limiting me to 30 meters guys so it must have beginner mode on but it won't let me turn it off while i'm flying i have to land so let's bring it over let's actually land it and see if it'll let me out of that 30 meter height bringing it down we're gonna put it back to record I forgot to start recording again even though I have the screen recording going <coughs> and we'll, we'll uh, perform a return to home once I get this back in the air before I end this video get it somewhat close to the pad there there we go okay so stop recording Let's go into the options. Okay, when this mode is turned on, the drone's flight speed and range will be significantly re reduced. So let's turn it off. Okay, and let's start recording again and take off. So it should be shut off. So I just turned it on and then off again. Let's climb. Yeah, we're past 30 meters now. We're up to 41. Okay, so let's turn around. Wind speed is too high. We are going to stop recording. Take another photo that direction. We're going to send the drone out. Just out the field a little bit. 100 meters, something like that. That's far enough, 80. 90 there. 99 meters. Let's make sure our return to home limits. That is set to 50. We're going to put that on 30. Confirm. It's not wanting to change it here. 30. Confirm. Okay, it's telling me it cannot be set that range. It's set to 50. We're pretty close to there anyway. So let's return to home. There we go. And it's coming back. So we're getting low on power. We're down to 50%. It just gave me the warning. Let's see how close this comes to the pad, guys. I'm guessing about eight feet or so off. That's uh, roughly what it was the last time I'd done this. Oh, I know a lot of people gave this drone quite a bit of flack, but there are quite a few people that actually like this drone. Its biggest downside is the 4K15, guys. That's actually not bad. That's 
just over the edge of the pad there. And it was like it didn't want to stop the motors there for a second. It was kind of trying to lift off again. Okay, so not bad. It's not even a foot away. So I would say, yes, it's pretty decent, worth the $200. I can tell you guys the build quality on this thing is phenomenal. It's really, really good. But uh, Seafly really need to update their drones more and get with the times. As you can see, this thing has quite a bit of movement. You know, it's not the most stable drone, but it's worth $200, guys. It's certainly worth $200 for what you're getting. And the amount of features that it has in it, that's something that I just didn't show you guys today. But it does have follow me and whatnot. The follow me doesn't work the greatest. The, uh, the drone kind of turns away from you. And then it's sort of like a GPS follow. Even though it says it's an image follow, which it isn't. It is not an image follow. But it's still a pretty decent drone. And we have other features like the dronies and whatnot. So I am going to say yes, pick this up for the 200 bucks, guys. It's pretty... Pretty decent, pretty fun little flyer. That being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, leave a like and a comment. Make sure those notifications are on. And until the next one, peace and a